Hello and welcome to lesson six in this tutorial series on how to learn how to program using Scratch. Now, so far we have looked at how to have input and output in a program. We've learned about strings and variables and also we've learned about criminal kittens or concatenation. Today we're going to be looking at maths, so how to work with numbers rather than text. So we have a program, let's just have a little look at our Scratch program set up here. Here we are. Uh, we've still got this pretty much as we left it. I'm going to start off with this uh, block here, but just so that we've got a change of scene, let's change the backdrop to something different. So I'm going to go for this desert scene here. And why don't we change this uh, uh, sprite here as well while we're at it. We'll click on the bin to get rid of that sprite. Click on the little sprite icon down here and let's choose something. Uh, there we are. Let's go for this dinosaur here. I think that one looks good. So we're going to click on that dinosaur and put that in our scene. There we go. Um, right, so we have our sprite, we have our background, we're ready to do some maths. So the first thing we're going to do is grab uh, the green flag block from the events category. So remember, this is how we start pro uh, programming, start a program from running. So I click the plus button there to increase the size of it. And what I want to do here is a couple of things. First of all, I want to ask the user for a number. Uh, then I want to ask the user for a second number and then we're going to add those two numbers together and then output the result. Now if you've looked at the previous videos before now, you'll be aware of the fact that when we ask the user for uh, some data, we have a choice. And at the basic level, what we can do is just store the one item of data that they've given us and then we could do something immediately with that. But if we want to have more than one bit of information, as we did with the previous lesson, we have a problem because in that case, we're not going to be able to store more than one bit of information in the answer box. So what we had to learn how to use previously is something called a variable. And a variable, if you remember, is simply a labeled or named box inside the computer's memory where we can store a single piece of information. And we can have as many of these variables as we want. And we had one previously called name to store the user's name. And we had another one called color. Uh, now those variables stored strings, stored text. In this case, what we're going to be doing now is having some variables, but those will store numbers instead. And then we'll be able to do some maths with those numbers, as you'll see. So let's begin by getting a little uh, dinosaur here to ask us for the first number. So to do that, we have to go to sensing and we're going to grab the block that says ask what's your name. Now we don't want to ask the question what's your name. Instead, what we're going to say is um, what is the first number? There we go. And wait. Now, of course, when we enter that number, it is going to be stored temporarily in this little built in box called answer. But that won't be any good for us because we only have one of those and we'll need to store two separate numbers so we can add them together. So what we're going to have to do with this answer is put it inside a variable and we don't have one just yet. So let's make that. We're going to click on the variables uh, block over here and we're going to make a new variable. Uh, let's call this one first num or first number. Let's do that. So first number and click OK. And we'll also need a second variable for our second number. So we'll call it second number. Second number. There we go. And we could also have a third variable to store the answer once we've added those two numbers together. So let's make a third variable and call this answer. There we go. Store. Now you'll notice that on the game window over here, we have all three uh, variables displayed. We don't really need that. So I'm going to click these little ticks on the left hand side to hide them from the game area. OK, so we have our variables. Now what we need to do is put the first number that the user's entered inside the first variable. 
So we'll grab this block here from the variables category that says set answer to. So if we click on this drop down here, we want actually the first number to be the variable that we're going to use, not this answer box because that only contains one. So I'm going to choose set the first number variable to whatever is given to us, whatever the answer to that question is. So we have our first number. Now let's duplicate uh, these two boxes here. So I right click on the first one and click duplicate. That gives us another pair of boxes. And we can now ask, what is the second number? Let's change this to second number and wait. Now, of course, that answer is going to go into the answer box uh, that will delete or remove or replace whatever was in there originally. So our first number has gone from there, but it's OK because we stored that in the first number variable here. So this second number will get stored in the variable we made called second number. So we have two variables or two labeled boxes inside the computer's memory, one called first number, one called second number, and those contain the two numbers the user will enter. Now, the second thing we have to do, or the third thing we have to do, is to add those two numbers together. And we'll store the answer to that in the variable called answer. So what we need to do here is set the answer variable, that one we made earlier on, to first number plus second number. That's what we want to do, first number plus second number. So where are we going to go to find the plus or the add block? And the answer is in operators. Now, if you've done this in maths, you'll know that there are four basic operators. And you can see them at the top here. They're not very clear, but hopefully on your screen, if you're using Scratch, you'll see those more clearly. We have the plus, the minus, the multiply, which is not the X symbol that you often use in maths. You'll see that this is the little star or asterisk. Now, the little star is used because if we were to use an X, the letter X, that would get confusing if, for example, we had a variable called X. And then you wouldn't be able to X times something else. It wouldn't know whether that was a times symbol or the name of a variable. So in programming, we use this asterisk for multiply. And the fourth one is divide. And again, you'll see that there is not the normal divide sign, which you'd write with a line and a dot above and below it. And of course, there isn't one of those symbols on your keyboard. So what we use instead is the forward slash, um, and that works as a divide. So we have plus, minus, multiply, and divide. The four symbols that we use for the main operators are on your keyboard. Uh, if you look at the right hand side, assuming you have a keyboard with what we call a number pad on the right, like a little calculator uh, with the uh, nine, sorry, 10 digits uh, lined up in a, a kind of a keypad arrangement. If you'd have one of those at the top right corner of that will be those four symbols. The plus symbol will probably be a bigger one than the other three, um, but those four symbols, the plus, multiply, minus, and divide, will be in that top right corner. Now, we don't, don't want these for the moment. We just want the plus button here. So we're going to set the answer to something plus something. What is that something plus something? Well, it's first number plus second number. Those are variables, so let's head over to uh, variables, grab the first number and drop it in the left hand box, and then grab the second number and drop that in the right hand box. So there we are. Set the answer to whatever the first number plus the second number is. Now, of course, in the previous tutorial, we looked at using join, where we joined one thing to another. Now that was called concatenation, and that is simply getting one bit of text, one word or variable, and connecting it with another. This green block here with a plus symbol looks very similar, but because it has that plus operator, it isn't joining them together, it is adding them, which means that we must have a number. 
in each of these variables. If we don't have a number, it's not going to know how to add apples plus the number seven, for example. So as long as we have numbers in here, that won't be a problem. So now what we need to do is output the result. So we need to tell the user what the answer is. So let's go over to looks um, and then we'll say, and we could just simply for the moment, put the answer in here. Let's go to variables, grab the answer variable and drop it in there. So if we run this program now, let's go full screen to see this. Um, and I'll just rerun the program. So click the green flag to press go. It looks as though he's got something in his teeth, doesn't it? it? Looks like he's been eating broccoli and he has something in his teeth. Never mind. We'll click the green flag. What is the first number? So let's type in the number seven, for example. Press enter. What is the second number? Let's enter the number five. Now, when you're writing programs and you're testing them, it's always a good idea to know what you're expecting to get at the end. You could have two numbers that are in the millions, but would you know if the answer was right? It's best to keep things simple to begin with to make sure that you're getting the answer you expect. So of course, seven plus five is, yep, well done, 12. I'm assuming. Uh, so if we press enter there, you'll see that our dinosaur is giving us the answer. So he's doing something different to how he uh, or how our previous sprite worked in the last one. In the previous lesson, we could see that we were joining words together. In this case, we are adding numbers, adding values together. But of course, we don't just have to do add, we could do multiply. Let's take this green block here with a plus symbol on it. I'm going to just remove the two variables for the moment, just pop them over there. And I'm going to get rid of that plus block. And instead, I'm going to do a multiplication. Let's grab the multiplication block, the operator here that has the asterisk in it, and we'll drop that inside this answer set answer block instead. So now we'll put the first number in and oops, I just misplaced that. There we are. Let's put the second number in there, grab the whole thing and drop it up there. Sometimes you will find it's not always easy to work out whether you've got the block in the right location. You can see there that um, the possible places this block could go are being highlighted with a white glow around the outside. So look for that white glow. And then you'll know that if you've got it in the right place, you can let go and it will snap into position. So I know that's going to go in there. There we go. Let's run the program again. Let's just move him so he's not got broccoli in his teeth at this time. There we go. Click the green flag. So what is the first number? Uh, let's do those two numbers again. Let's do seven, first of all. And the second number, five. Make sure you know what the answer should be. Seven times five. Press enter. And there we are. The answer 35, of course. So we can see that we can do basic mathematical operations, adding, multiplying, subtracting and dividing. So I want to have a little go at doing that yourself now. So create a little program that asks the user for two numbers, adds them or multiplies them. And if you want to try extending this a little bit, a couple of things that you can do. One is you can combine the ideas from the previous lesson where we had concatenation so that you're actually saying to the user, uh, let's say seven times five, we can say seven times five is 35. So we're concatenating, first of all, those variables using the join block, and then we are also including the answer. So you could do that. Um, and you could also extend this program by asking the user for say three numbers and storing those in three variables and then adding all three variables together. So have a little go at playing with that. Come back to this code if you need any help. Uh, in the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at asking questions to the computer, getting it to decide what to do next, depending on the number that we give it. At the moment, it just does adding those two numbers or multiplying those two numbers. But in the next lesson, we'll look at using a very, very powerful programming tool called selection, which will get the computer to decide what to do next. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.